So in the earlier lecture, we started with uh, the definition of non-uniform flow. Then uh, we differentiated between uh, non-uniform flow and uniform flow. We also studied about the types of non-uniform flow, that is gradually varied flow and rapidly varied flow. The difference between gradually varied flow and rapidly varied flow. Then we moved on to deriving an equation for this gradually varied flow. <coughs> And we also discussed about the different types of uh, bed slopes. So we discussed about mild slope, steep slope, critical slope, horizontal slope and adverse slope with reference to the channel bed. This was the point where we stopped in the last class. Let us proceed further. So in this class, we are going to talk about the classification of water surface profiles. What are surface curves are? Surface curves of water are called flow profiles or it is also called water surface profiles. The shape of water surface profiles are mainly determined by the slope of the channel bed. Yes, not. This is important. The shape of water surface profiles are mainly determined by the slope of the channel bed. Kindly recall in the last class, we discussed about mild slope. We discussed about steep slope, critical slope, horizontal slope and adverse slope. So what I mean to say is, so the surface water slope depends on the slope of the channel bed. Now for a given discharge, the normal depth and the critical depth may be calculated. Then the following steps are followed to classify the water surface profile. A line parallel to the channel bottom with a height of yn is drawn and is designated as normal depth line NDL. A line parallel to the channel bottom with a height of yc is drawn and is designated as critical depth line. So therefore three lines, one represents the channel bit. The other one is the normal depth and the third one is the critical depth. Now, the vertical space in the longitudinal section is divided into three zones using the two lines drawn in step two and step three. What I mean to say is, please refer to this figure. Now, this is the channel bottom. Now, this is the line corresponding to critical depth line or normal depth line. I will come to this point in a little later stage. And above this, you have one more line that may be the normal depth line or critical depth line. Now you have uh, above this channel bit, you have two lines. Now with reference to this, there are three zones. So suppose if the depth of flow in a river or a stream is above this CDL, or NDL, we call this as zone 1. Now, if the depth of water is between this NDL and the CDL or CDL or NDL, then we call this as zone 2. Now, if the depth of water is above the channel bed and below this CDL or NDL, then we call that we call that uh, zone as zone 3. So, with reference to the channel bed, write a line parallel yeah, depth equal to yn that represents the normal depth line write another line parallel to the channel bed and the depth corresponding to this is yc so we have zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 so if the depth of flow is above this critical depth and the normal depth then or y is somewhere here then we call this as zone 1 if the depth of flow in the stream or, is ri or river is between zone 1 and zone 2 or between, I mean, sorry, uh, between this NDL and CDL or CDL and NDL, then we call it as uh, zone 2. If the depth of flow in the river or stream is below the CDL or NDL, then we call that uh, zone as zone 3. So this is about zone 2. Zone, uh, zone 1, 
zone 2 and zone 3. Now, depending upon the zone and the slope of the bed, water profiles are classified into 13 types as follows. Now, let us start with the mild slope curves. Okay. So, mild slope curves, we have M1 curve, M2 curve, M3 curve. What is this M? What is this one? So, M represents the type of slope. It is mild slope represented by capital uh, M and one represents the zone. Okay. So, mild slope zone 1, mild slope zone 2, mild slope zone 3. Similarly, the second one is steep slope curves S1, S2 and S3. Now, critical slope curve. Now, kindly recall in the last class. So, how we define this critical slope? In case of a critical slope, the normal depth is equal to critical, critical depth. Okay. So, in that case, Yn is equal to Yc. So, if you look at this figure, okay, the top line represents the NDL and the, and the middle, middle one represents the CDL. Now, this corresponds to Yc and this corresponds to Yn. Now, when the flow is critical or the slope is critical, Yn is equal to Yc. In other words, when I am talking about the critical slope, there is no zone 2. Okay, There is only one line. This line represents NDL is equal to CDL. I am going to talk more about that when, I am draw, when we are drawing the surface profiles. Similarly, come to the next one, horizontal slope curves. So, your H1 curve is not there. We have H2 curve and H3 curves. And finally, we have adverse slope curves. Again, A1 curve will not be there. We have A2 and A3. So, if you look at this, there are about 13 types of water profiles. Okay. Now, whatever I mentioned now that I put it in this sentence, in all these curves, the letter indicates the slope type and the subscript indicates the zone. For example, S2 curve occurs in zone 2 of the steep slope. Okay. Now, we will go further. Now, this table is very important. Okay. Now, let us start with the mild slope. Mild slope, you have this zone 1, zone 2, zone 3. Okay. Now, if the value of y, the depth of flow in the river is greater than yn and which is greater than yc, we call the type of flow or the flow profile as m1. That is mild slope zone 1. Please refer to this figure, mild slope figure. For the first case, now this is the bed slope, this is the criti uh, critical depth line, this is the normal depth line. In, as, I, as I said earlier, for zone 1, the depth of water in the channel or the stream is above this critical depth and above this normal depth. That is, y is somewhere here. Now, when y is somewhere here and the channel bed is mild, then the type of M1 curve we are going to get is like this. So, this is called M1 curve. Now, come to the second case. That is, the depth of water in the river or stream is between the normal depth and the critical depth. The depth of flow in the river or the stream is between normal depth and the critical depth. So, that is what I mentioned here. So, Yn, Yn is greater than Y, Y is somewhere here and which is greater than Yc. Then the type of curve we call it as M2 curve. And this is the typical type of M2 curve uh, we'll observe in the field. This is about M2 curve. Now come to the third zone, zone 3. So zone 3, kindly recall, I said, so value of Y is less than Yc, which is less than Yn. Look at this. So Yn or Y0 is greater than Yc. Okay. And this y, uh, Yc is greater than Y. In other words, y is somewhere here. So, this y is less than yc, less than yn. Now, if the depth of water is in this zone 3 and this is the type of curve you are going to get. The, the curves, what, what right now I am showing are the typical type of curves 
So one can expect when the bed slope is mild. So this is M3 curve, this is M2 curve and this is M1 curve. Now kindly recall in the last class I said steep slope is just opposite to mild slope. So just now, so here we showed that. So critical depth is less than the normal depth. But in case of steep slope, so critical slope is more than the normal uh, slope, normal uh, depth. So please look at this. This is steep slope. This is normal depth and this is critical depth. So again, you have three zones, zone one, zone two, zone three. Now, if the curve lies in zone one, we call it as S1 curve because right now we are talking about uh, steep slope, steep slope zone 1, steep slope zone uh, zone 2 and steep slope zone 3. Now, if my value of Y is greater than YL, greater than YC and this is the type of curve we are going to uh, get for a S1 zone or zone 1 in case of a steep slope. Similarly, if the value of y e lies between yc and yn and this is your s2 or s2 curve and if the value of y, uh, y lie, lies below this yn which is less than yc and this is the type of curve we are going to get and this curve is called s3 curve. So the thumb rule you need to remember is if you know the characteristics of steep slope, so just opposite to this steep slope is a mild slope or if you know the characteristics of this mild slope, so opposite to this mild slope is the characteristics for this steep slope. This is about mild slope and steep slope. Come to horizontal slope. How we define horizontal slope? Now if the bed slope is zero, if the bed slope is zero, then we call it as a horizontal slope. Now in this case, when I'm talking about horizontal slope, my normal depth is infinity. My normal depth is infinity. So you cannot, since the, since the value of y is equal to yn is equal to infinity, you cannot expect a point above infinity. That's why there is no zone one in case of horizontal slope. Again, I repeat, in case of a horizontal slope, the value of yn is equal to infinity. Since the value of yn itself is infinity, we cannot expect a point above this infinity. Therefore, there is no zone 1 for, K for a horizontal slope. Whereas, the value of yc lies below this yn. So, you have yn value which is at infinity and below this yn you have this yc. So in other words, when I'm talking about horizontal slope, I have two zones, zone 2 and zone 3. That is given by h2 and h3. Now, in case of uh, zone 2, the value of y is above this yc. Okay. Now we must be very, very careful. The value of yn is infinity. So value of y is less than yn, which is at infinity, or the better, better way of writing that is, so value of y in case of zone 2 is above yc. That is in case of zone 2. Now in case of zone 3, the value of y lies below this yc. Now if the value of y lies above this yc, then this is the kind of surface profile will get for a horizontal slope. This is H2 curve and this is the typical H3 curve. This is about horizontal slope. Now come to the critical slope. At the beginning of this topic, I said for a critical slope, Yn is equal to Yc. Since Yn is equal to Yc, there is no zone 2 for a critical slope. So you have zone 1 and zone 3. Okay. Now, the line which you are going to draw parallel to the bed slope that is equal to your NDL 
or CDL. NDL is equal to CDL. Now above that, you have this zone 1 and below that, you have this zone 3. Again, I repeat, for a critical slope, Yn is equal to Yc. Therefore, there is no zone 2 for a critical slope. So, the line which we are going to draw above this bed slope, that is Yn is equal to Yc or CDL is equal to NDL. Above this line, you have zone 1 and below this line, you have zone 3. Now, if the value of Y or the depth of flow of water in the channel is above this NDL or CDL, okay? Now, this is the type of graph or the surface profile you are going to get. So, this is called the C1 curve, okay? Similarly, if the value of Y is below this Yn or Yc, okay? So, the type of curve we are going to get is this type. So, we have C1 curve and the C3 curve. There is no C2 curve for a critical slope. This is about critical slope. Now, come to the last one, adverse slope. Again, in case of adverse slope, there is no zone 1. Again, we have zone 2 and zone 3. So, in this case, in this case, my YC is less than YN. YC is less than YN. Now, if the value of Y lies between this YN and YC, the type of profile you are going to get is known as A2 profile or A2 curve. If the value of Y lies below this YC or CDL, critical depth line, you are going to get a A3 curve. Kindly refer to this figure. So, this is the type of A2 curve one can expect and this is the typical A3 curve. The next question, sir, why do we need this type of profiles or these curves? So, usually in the examination, they will ask you to find what is the bed slope and you need to find in which uh, zone the depth of flow is and you are asked to write a typical uh, curve for that zone. There is a reason. You must know the different types of surface profiles uh, in different zones and you must know how the typical curve, whether it is in zone 1, zone 2, zone 3 and the type of slope. So, this slide is very, very important for solving the different types of problems, uh, whether it is mild slope channel, steep slope channel, critical slope or horizontal slope. Okay. Now, let us take a couple of uh, practical problems where you encounter this type of uh, water profiles and how it look like. <clears throat> now, the first one is a mild slope channel. Now, here in this case, so this is the obstruction. This is a wear constructed across a stream or a river. This is mild slope. My Yn is greater than Yc. So you have the critical depth line. You have a normal depth line. Now, if you don't construct the obstruction, if you don't construct, construct the obstruction, okay, this will be the depth of water throughout the year or maybe during the uh, heavy rainfall. So, once you construct the obstruction, okay, water starts rising at the obstruction and the excess water starts flowing over this obstruction. Kindly recall in the last class when I mentioned about the difference between uh, GVF and RVF, I gave this example. Now, this is the normal depth. And this is the new depth. So, this variation, okay, if I call this as y1, y, y1, and this is y2, this y2 minus y1, the difference in depth happens over a long reach. 
then we call the type of flow as gradually varied flow. Now, in this case, the type of curve which we are going to see a backwater curve, this is is this one is M1 curve. Okay. Now, come to the second uh, zone or M2. So, in this case, again, we have the CDL, this is mild slope and NDL. Now, if the depth of flow is between NDL and CDL, this is the type of curve one can visualize. This is the M2 curve. Now, come to this M3 curve. Now, the right, right now, what right now you are seeing here is a sluice. What is a sluice? It is an opening provided in the dam or in the tank. Okay. So, through which you are going to supply water. So, this sluice may be operated by means of a shutter. Now, this is the level of water on the upstream side and this is the level of water on the downstream side. Now, if, the, if this bed slope is mild, mild and if you allow water, the surface profile, what you are seeing on the downstream side is your M3. So, this is in zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. So, this is about mild slope. Now, come to steep slope. I said the characteristics of mild slope are just opposite to steep slope. In other words, so in, for a steep slope, the value of Yc is more than the Yn. That is what you are seeing here. So, you have critical depth line, normal depth line. Look at the slope, bed slope here. So, in this case, it is very steep. Again, across this steep slope, if we construct an obstruction, the flow profile, what you are seeing, if the, if the depth of water is somewhere, a, somewhere here, okay, then this is your S1 curve. You must be very, very careful. For, the, for zone 1, the value of Y is above YC and YM. Then only we call it call that as uh, S1 or M1 curves. So in this case, right now I am talking about, I presume that the value of Y is somewhere here. So when this excess water starts flowing over the obstruction, the flow profile, what you are seeing here is so S1 curve. Now come to the second case. So in this case, there is a sudden change in the uh, bed slope. When you have a sudden change, Okay, the type of profile you are seeing here is so the depth of water in the channel is between normal depth line and critical depth line, and when the depth sudden, when the when the slope suddenly changes, this is the type of curve you can visualize for a steep slope. This is your S2 curve. Again, come to the third one or zone three curve. So okay, so in this case, on the downstream side of this sluice. The slope is very steep and when you allow water to flow through this sluice or an opening, the type of curve you are seeing here is S3 curve. So this is the sluice, this is the way and you are in the second uh, zone, we are considering the slope change. Okay. So this is about mild slope and the steep slope in the actual situation or in the field. Come to critical slope. So, in case of a critical slope, so you need to know the uh, characteristics of critical slope. So, we know that for a critical slope, so Yn is equal to Yc, there is no zone 2, you have zone 1 and zone 3 and this is, so zone 1, uh, zone 1 and this is zone 3. So, in this case also, since we are talking about zone 1, so the slope changes and since the flow is critical flow and the bed slope is critical, this is the type of S2 curve you are going to, C2 curve you are going to observe for a critical bed slope. Now come to this uh, C3. Again, the depth of water flowing in the stream or below this sluice is below this NDL and CDL and this is the type of curve you are observing. This is called C3 curve. Again, I repeat, for a critical slope, there is no C2 curve. Okay, you have C1 and C3. Sir, here you mentioned C2. 
There is a typo here which I am going to correct it afterwards. This is C1 curve and C3 curve. Now come to the next one, horizontal slope. So look at the slope. Slope is horizontal. So suddenly it changes. There is a vertical fall. So in that case, this is the normal depth line. This is the critical depth line. So if the value of y is somewhere here between NDL and CDL, this is the type of profile we are going to see. Okay. So this is H2 curve. Now if the floor is horizontal and if you open the sluice gate, the type of water profile that is emerging from this water coming out of the uh, sluice is your H3. So you have H2 curve, you have H3 curve. Come to the adverse slope. Now in the, in the last class, how we define this adverse slope? Now slope is decreasing in the direction of flow. Slope is negative. Then we call the type of flow as adverse slope. So look at this. This is in the earlier case. So kindly recall. So when you have this open channel flow, when the various the when the various forces overcome the gravity forces, then there is a flow. Now in this case, since this slope is up in, so increasing in the direction of flow. Okay. Now in this case, the frictional forces are more than the other forces or gravity forces. Okay. So that is the reason when, when the slope is ascending in the direction of flow, there is no flow. So in this case also, we have two types of curves. One is A2 curve, the other one is A3 curve. Okay. Now, when you come to this sixth semester or seventh semester, you are going to you are going to study different types of cross drainage works. You are going to study about aqueduct. There you are talk, talking about what is known as siphon aqueduct and the super passage. So there you are going to encounter this case and the type of so look at this. So on the upstream side, this is called the upstream side. This is called the downstream side. So your water flows through this duct and the profile what you are seeing here is your A3 curve. Okay. So these are the different water profiles for mild slope, steep slope, critical slope, horizontal slope and adverse slope.